Okay, welcome back. Uh, we're going to install our two diodes next. Uh, There's the band side, which is the cathode, and the non banded side, which is the anode. So I'm going to bend these guys about 0.4 inch again. Uh, the band side goes up on D1. This is D1 right here. I've got to neaten that up a little bit more. That doesn't, it's not the greatest. These are a little bit more harder to bend because they're smaller. There we go. So let's take that and rebend it. Again, another good tool is is the resistor lead bender. Uh, works really well. That's why I use them at work. And the banded end on this diode D2 faces the right hand side going away from the transformer. So there's your two diodes there. We'll solder those two in place. So I can get a little bit closer. I got the camera in my way so I'm really soldering like about a foot away. Normally I'm only a few inches away. Okay, so there we go. So that is basically it on how to assemble this thing. Give you a couple more tips. Um, up here, there's some more holes. Um, I like to use some scrap piece of component lead and just bend a little U and uh, bring it right in. like that and that's important because um, when you assemble this I like to fold these completely over and I'll tell you why in a minute and then solder it in place so you're going to do that to all these other holes here here and on this side here and here uh, this one is going to be just like in a schematic up here this is going to be your transceiver microphone going into your transceiver. This guy, these two here, are going to be your 5 to 14 volts DC to power the circuit. That comes from your radio, from your microphone. Uh, if you don't have that voltage on your radio, if it's an old radio, you're going to have to bring in a separate like 9 volt battery to power this thing up. But most of the modern transceivers, they have some sort of voltage coming out uh, that you can tap off of. Uh, these two guys are PTT. Now the interesting thing is I forgot to put a ground in here so what you're going to have to do is you're just going to sneak in your ground wire and connect it to the anode side of D1 right here. So maybe in my next set of badge I'll have a, a separate post down here for you guys to solder onto. Now this is real important that you want to install these things because when you put it in your box the box is a kind of tight fit. So you're going to bring in your audio cable straight through. There should be a hole pre-drilled for you. And you're going to solder your audio connections from your computer speaker here. Um, you're going you're gonna to install um, your 440 hardware with a nut. And then you can shoehorn this guy in like that. And then with your other cable you come in and solder to your point. So you're going to be using the soldering iron getting in really tight into this box. You want to be careful uh, of the sides. You want to keep in mind where your where your iron is so you don't melt the sides. And that's how you get it in there. Um, there really isn't any easier way unfortunately because of the uh, size of this. So and uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, you want to check for shorts. So I have a multimeter here. Uh, any old multimeter would do with a continuity check. Uh, I've got a Fluke 87 here. Um, so I just go to my ground 
I call this my ground, but it's not really ground. It's it's an isolated uh, copper. Um, so I just want to check for any shorts. Uh, if I do see any shorts, I want to check the uh, groove of the isolation. So there's no short there. So I'm checking every single connection. Even though it's on the same trace, I like to do every single connection, double check to make sure everything's okay. And it looks fine. And if you do have a short, double check everything. Uh, take some solder wick, solder, solder wick it up. Um, and that's pretty much it for troubleshooting this thing. And uh, hope you enjoyed the kit. And uh, hopefully I'll be making some more of these.